Calaroga Shark Media. From the Utah desert, where the former governor of Massachusetts wants to pardon the New Yorker who lives in Florida, this is Ballot. Today, well, someone has hopped up on something, I guess. And no, it's not me. Let's hit this. Seth Meyers is excited for the debates, saying, President Biden and former President Trump are set to face off in two presidential debates. Biden is looking forward to laying out his 2024 agenda, while Trump is just happy to go somewhere where nobody will draw him while he sleeps. Biden getting Trump to agree to no audiences is like getting a vampire to fight you at noon on the beach during the garlic festival. Jimmy Fallon explained, Biden and Trump will meet June 27th on CNN, and one of Biden's debate conditions was not having an audience. So that explains why it's on CNN. Trump agreed to the debate. He said, I'll be there assuming it's okay with my parole officer. And Stephen Colbert with the winner. Imagine Trump with his mic cut. He's going to look like the world's angriest mime. Today we're breaking down the latest astonishing comments from Senator Mitt Romney, who has once again managed to confound and bewilder with his perspective on the Trump legal saga. In an interview, the former Republican presidential nominee argued that President Biden should have not only preemptively pardoned Donald Trump for his alleged crimes, but also pressured New York prosecutors to drop the hush money case entirely. Yes, you heard that correctly. Romney believes Biden fundamentally erred by allowing the judicial process to proceed independently against Trump. Claiming a pardon would have made Biden the big guy and Trump the little guy. He says the president missed a golden opportunity to consolidate power royal court style. But Romney didn't stop there with the baffling rhetoric. He even invoked the ghost of LBJ, suggesting Biden take a page from the bullying playbook and strong-arm prosecutors into abandoning the case lest they be driven out of office. So much for that much-vaunted respect for separation of powers and democratic norms. According to Mr. Romney, Biden should have abused his executive authority for sheer optics and mind games. The cognitive dissonance didn't end there, though. When asked about the clown car parade of Trump sycophants and potential VP picks rallying outside the Manhattan courthouse, Romney called the whole circus demeaning and admitted he'd feel awkward engaging in such undignified antics. But just seconds later, he practically endorses the tactic by speculating that such obsequious public displays may actually help candidates get selected as Trump's running mate. Smooth move. x lax Pivoting to the newly agreed to Trump-Biden debates, Romney forecast a lopsided dynamic where Trump's competitiveness and forceful presence would badly overshadow Biden's expected low-energy sleepwalking performance, a take so devoid of self-awareness that it almost circles back around to insightful. At this point, you have to wonder if the good senator has simply become addicted to generating headlines via constant verbal stream of consciousness spills. It's like Mitt Romney has transformed into a human version of a Trump rambling. Just a constant deluge of bewildering, contradictory, and reality-untethered musings. But hey, at least it makes for great fodder here on Ballot. Anytime a prominent politician wants to indulge in unvarnished absurdism and hypotheticals utterly divorced from governing principles, you can be sure we'll be here to mock it mercilessly. Lord knows Mitt gave us plenty of ammunition this week. It seems the upcoming Hunter Biden trial is shaping up to be a bit of a damp squib for the MAGA faithful hoping to reignite the laptop saga flames. According to sources within the White House and Trump's own camp, neither side is really prepping any big counterpunches or war room setups for this particular legal showdown. The Democrats are chalking it up to Biden's lawyers being more than capable of handling it, while Republicans increasingly see the Biden crime family narrative as a played-out dead end. On the White House front, aides apparently feel Trump and the GOP have largely moved on from obsessively targeting Hunter in recent months. Years of slings and arrows have barely made a dent in voters' perceptions. So why bother with a renewed full-court press over something as pedestrian as a gun charge? Even Biden's ally quoted seems relatively nonplussed, suggesting they'll only clap back if Trump or the House GOP try dragging Big Daddy Biden into the fray too. A smart hedge, since the former president himself has been uncharacteristically mum on his once favorite target lately. But the real tea? It comes from the anonymous Trump world insiders essentially admitting the Hunter stuff has run its course as an effective political bludgeon. 
One bluntly states that this particular trial, focused on Hunter's admitted struggle with drug addiction and gun possession, is too far removed from the juicier corruption accusations to warrant going full spinorama. In their own candid words, him having a gun and snorting cocaine, that doesn't go to the Biden crime family narrative and story. Ouch! When even MAGA Inc. is throwing up their hands at the prospect of milking more mileage from the laptop gate saga, you know it's deader than Douglas Fairbanks. MAGA Congressman Greg Murphy decided to grace the Fox Business airwaves by peddling a wild, unsubstantiated claim that President Biden was absolutely jacked up on something during his State of the Union address. According to Dr. Murphy's expert medical opinion, there's just no way Sleepy Joe could have maintained that vigorous, two-hour sailing of MAGA Republicans without some illicit pharmaceutical assistance. The president's unexpected verve and stamina simply doesn't comport with Murphy's image of a frail, befuddled codger. To her credit, Maria Bartiromo at least expressed some professional journalistic skepticism, pressing the belligerent congressman on whether he meant proof of Biden being juiced up on actual drugs or just generic medicine. Undeterred, Murphy simply doubled down, insisting he has evidence of Biden being drugged and framing it as part of a nefarious DNC ploy. He's been manufactured and puppeteered by the Democratic Party to be president. I'm annoyed they're going to make me work again this weekend. When I took this job, nobody told me there would be news every Sunday. Morehouse College President David A. Thomas finds himself squarely in the middle of a firestorm as the historically black institution prepares to host President Biden for their graduation ceremony this Sunday. So guess who's going to get asked to come into work? Right, me. In a refreshingly principled stance, Thomas made it crystal clear that he won't allow any overzealous policing or harsh crackdowns on potential student protests during Biden's speech, declaring he would shut down commencement on the spot rather than permitting law enforcement to haul away demonstrators in zip ties. Thomas displayed an admirable commitment to upholding civil liberties. His reasoning? We should never put the ego of the institution above our values. And one of our values is to see the humanity in all. You've got to respect the consistency in protecting the right to free expression, even if it risks disrupting such a major milestone event. Of course, Thomas did establish some reasonable boundaries, vowing to prohibit outright hate speech or any calls for violence. But otherwise, Morehouse seems intent on being a space that can hold the tensions currently roiling college campuses over Israel-Palestine and other hot-button issues. Portions of today's program were written with the help of an AI that was probably jacked up on something. If you'd like these episodes commercial-free, pay more attention to the promo that's been running at the start of the show for three weeks now. $4.99. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. I'm out.